Leave it 5 one turn right heading 180. This is, as discussed, an unprecedented time for the aviation industry and, of course, more generally, planet Earth. However, as always, the focus sticks to aviation on this channel. So with that being said, it's time to dip into a question and answer sort of video, something I've chosen not to do for some time, but I'm now bringing it back. I don't know for how long. So how do airlines park up their aircraft when they're not operating? This is something we're seeing widely occur across the board now. We begin with the first step, parking. Parking hundreds of aircraft around the world is simply no easy task. While some airlines are fortunate enough to be able to park their grounded aircraft up at their hub, other airlines cannot, and these said aircraft then need to be ferried to locations around the world, often to storage airports slash graveyards. These are not your typical locations, as these airlines would normally not fly these types into these said airports on a daily basis. It doesn't even have to be a storage facility, to be honest. Sometimes it can be regional airports that are now no longer operating, or more, say, where airlines go to get their maintenance done. Of course, other factors play a part. In the past, we've seen airlines ground their jets in a specific location based solely on the climate if they believe the groundings will occur for a long time. Ideally, though, what would take place is like what KLM are doing, using their hub in Amsterdam to park the majority of their aircraft. At Amsterdam Schiphol, they've used the various gates, stands, and of course, remote parking stands and more. Ultimately, the best way anyone could describe parking aircraft is actually like a jigsaw puzzle. Because if you've taken a look at the parking stands before, say, a flight of yours, you'll see some gates are appropriate for said aircraft, while others are not. So say the Airbus A380 could not fit into a parking spot meant for the Boeing 737 MAX. It's about logistically working and fitting the pieces together. Like air travel, there's so much more though to just parking an aircraft than, well, leaving it in that said spot it's been designated and coming back to it in 15 months, hoping it'll still be exactly the same. These aircraft, whether it be a 20-year-old 747 or even a one-year-old A320neo, these all need to be kept in an airworthy condition, meaning they need to be ready to fly whenever they are required to be. That could be in a week or in three months or in 10 months. This is where inspections and also protective equipment comes into play. You may have seen in the past engines covered, and this is just one example. Taking us back to February 2019, when I was airside at Heathrow, I saw multiple parked up Virgin Atlantic 787s during the Rolls-Royce Trent 1000 engine crisis. These jets either had their engines totally removed or were covered up. Back to airworthiness though. Regular inspections take place during the grounding or parking up period. For KLM at Schiphol, it's the Active Storage Program, or ASP, and it sees KLM work closely with the airport. What's involved in these said inspections, though? Well, you might think that it's just technical proceedings, which are definitely included, but there's actually quite a bit more. In fact, it includes quite basic things like cleaning the cabin of the jet on a regular basis, even though no one is actually operating with it. You would not be alone, though, in forgetting this aspect of an inspection, as it probably does not first come to mind. While there's hundreds of other little tasks, ultimately focuses lie on ensuring that the systems are still working, doors are properly closed, and more. Closing the doors is just a simple task, maybe on the grand scheme of things, but if a storm passes by any airport that aircraft are indeed stored at, they need to be prepared to weather a storm like that. A door not closed properly, just like if the jet was in active operations, could be catastrophic damage-wise especially inside of the aircraft, where all the cabins, technical equipment are, and more. In addition, basic things like engine tests are indeed conducted on a regular basis. Often you will see memes online of airline engines spluttering to life after being parked up for a while. Typically, we've only really been seeing that with new aircraft, like say when the GE9X was turned on for the first time, or did specific engine tests to pass its airworthiness. Security is also another major part of the entire process. With billions of billions of dollars worth of aircraft just sitting there, these aircraft need to be monitored. Thankfully, airlines and airports know this and keep close tabs on all said aircraft, with full plans on where every single aircraft at their respective airport is indeed parked up, for how long, and so on. So if one was to say go missing, it would not be hard to pick out which one. With also regular maintenance checks, airlines can also understand if a type has been tampered with. Although this is very rare, it's still all part of the lengthy process. 
This topic has been so important recently due to the outbreak of COVID-19. While airlines have been parking up their aircraft since the beginning, it's never quite reached these staggering levels where almost every single operational airline has grounded their jets and barely any are flying now. With maybe cargo operations being excluded as that currently is indeed booming. We've seen the Lufthansa Group ground over 700 jets, leaving minimal flying across their various airlines. British Airways is retiring more 747s and has also parked up many. KLM has said goodbye to their 747s for passenger operations. The currently flying Airbus A380s is at levels we've never really seen before. Emirates has parked up almost all their aircraft, leaving only just some remaining. Delta, American, United, Qantas, Etihad and more are all included in this as well as your smaller regional airlines which are also struggling. It's simply staggering looking at what has actually been going on. Today's video though was a little bit of a different one. If you did enjoy it, don't hesitate to let me know. I appreciate the support greatly. Thanks as always and please do indeed stay safe. I'll see you all in the next video. Until then, take care.